Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard. And we are talking about the next guy who's going to take over for John MacArthur coming up next. Alright, so ladies need not apply. Not going to fly. Sorry, Joyce Meyer, Beth Moore, everybody else. Beth Moore really should go home, though. <laughs> Controversy, but really. Um, MacArthur told her that a few years ago, for those of you who aren't in the know. We're talking about who's going to take over for the next, for the, be the next John MacArthur. Now, um, up front, I don't have an exact name. However, I think it's still very helpful to talk about it. I think it's interesting to talk about it. It's not gossip or weird. But it's something that we should think about um, and consider, pray about. Um, John MacArthur has been a massive Titanic figure on the church's scene for the last 50 plus years. And really uh, is, I would say, probably the most known. <clears throat> I've asked people here in Kentucky. I'm a pastor uh, here in Kentucky, if you, didn't, if you don't know me. Hello. I'm also a husband and a father of four. Been married to my wife, my bride, since 2007. Originally from California and moved to Kentucky a number of years ago for seminary, Southern Seminary, and wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Maybe ministry, maybe church related, something in between. And seeing the <clears throat> utter dismal state of the church in the South slash Midwest, for those of you who aren't listening. Kentucky doesn't really consider herself the South, usually, although there are certain spots that people do consider. Um, we do have sweet tea here and things like that, which is delicious. I've grown to like it, although I'll usually do half and half. But anyway, I'm drinking coffee right now. I like my, I like my coffee. But <clears throat> um, something that is really needed is pastors. And pastors who stay as best as they can, right? Sometimes you can't stay. But a lot of times I think guys leave after a year or two or three, because that's the average in a Southern Baptist church, the average just kind of evangelical church, as far as I know, just a few years. And you're not really going to get a lot done in a few years. You know, people are going to come and go, new people, people get saved, hopefully, prayerfully, all these things. But at the end of the day, you're not really getting the the girth and the weight and the heaviness of, of, of something that's right. And so it takes a while, at least five years. I would say if you're looking at pastoral ministry or, you know, you're, you want to help your pastor five years, seven years, really. Now I hope that that's the case for me. Um, things are, things are hard, but God is good <laughs> as they say. And I've been here for just over two years. It'll be three years in March when I first did Pulpit Supply, where you just kind of, your substitute teacher. Um, and there's not really a pastor, you're just kind of preaching. And so, anyway, so enough about me, but this is about MacArthur. Now, this is going to come from my own experience. I know I said enough about me. <laughs> but we're going to be looking at the MacArthur Center for Preaching. Um... Center for Expository Preaching, to be exact, and the host, Austin Duncan. I'm going to have, I'm going to, we're going to go through the names that they talk about, he talks about, and then we're going to talk about a couple other options. Uh, I'm originally from Southern California, like I said, and actually went to a church that was planted by MacArthur's dad. I was saved at this church. It was planted in like the 50s, I think 54, as actually, what was it, MacArthur Memorial? Bible Church, or Bap I think it was MacArthur Memorial Baptist Church, I think it was, in Glendale, California. They moved to Burbank a number of years later, but the pastor, uh, John, Jack MacArthur, Jack and John are like short for each other, I don't know why, that's that's weird. It's like Natasha and Natalia, like, they're like, one's a nickname for the other. <laughs> weird. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Jack MacArthur, so the elder MacArthur who died a number of years ago, I think in his 90s? Point is, he planted this church, and it named after his father. So John MacArthur, current John MacArthur, his grandfather. And so the church I was went was a part of, was a member at, the Lord saved me at, 
um, was planted by Jack MacArthur, John MacArthur's dad. And he was actually, John MacArthur was the youth pastor there for like a year or two in like 67, 68. My dad actually knows, not anymore, but he knew and hung out with and spent some time with like at uh, Hume Lake, which is like a mountain resort up in Central California there north of LA with uh, MacArthur, although MacArthur's about what, eight years or so older than my, my dad, eight or nine years older. Anyway, he's got a couple of funny stories about volleyball and things. <laughs> I bet MacArthur would remember them. Uh, <laughs> I'll move on. Point is, they changed the name to Calvary Bible Church because it was like confusing. <laughs> I guess Jack MacArthur would get, <clears throat> he's like, why are you naming it after yourself? And it's like, well, I didn't, I named it after my dad. It's like, it's a memorial, right? And you don't have a memorial when you're alive. So I know they changed the, they changed the name. This MacArthur Center, as far as I know, is obviously named after John MacArthur. Uh, it's always kind of funny, you know, when you have that. Um, not throwing shade on him, but it is kind of weird. He, I'm sure he probably had something to do with it, but not 100% to do with it. He's not very egotistical by any means. Anyway, talking about MacArthur Expository Preaching, for, Center for Expository Preaching. Now, the host and the leader of it is Austin Duncan, who I've known about for a long time. I don't have his m number. I can call him, but I took a Greek class with him before I moved to Southern. And uh, a couple other instances, he'd preached at our church and did like men's breakfast and things. And I'd also heard him. At least I think he did. Maybe that's not right. Anyway, I'd heard him a number of times. I really enjoy his preaching. But he goes through, and I've listened to this podcast. This is a podcast online. It's on YouTube. We'll listen to the YouTube version because that's really the only social media I interact with. Usually. Sometimes Twitter, sometimes Facebook, but barely on those. This is episode eight, MacArthur and his successor. So we're going to play this a little bit fast speed, one and a half speed. And just for a little, just for the first 15 minutes or so off and on and look at what this really, what these guys are, because they name, he names several guys. And what they're going to be doing, little points of view, little interesting nuggets, whatever you want to call it. And we'll look at their church, we'll look at their bios, uh, just a little bit. I mean, it's not going to be exhaustive. And who I think of these guys and what I think will happen. I'm not a prophet, I'm not son of a prophet, but having a closer relationship. I didn't go to masters or anything like that, but I was in the backyard. I was playing with the kids as it were. And so I have a little bit more of an experience and my own thought and seeing the last decade, really 15 years, um, of interacting with and paying attention to Grace Community Church, Grace to You, listening to sermons from MacArthur, He's probably the top in the top three as far as formation for me uh, preaching. I don't agree with everything MacArthur uh, says or does. Certainly not. Uh, and if you, you know, oh, he's a Calvinist. I hate Calvinist. Or oh, he's a Calvinist, but he's not that kind of Calvinist. Or he's a premillennial dispensationalist. Or he's a young earther. Or he says, well, you can, at, at minimum, at minimum, you should deeply appreciate his staying power. Not only through COVID. You know, this 80 some odd year old guy defending and standing up against the government of Los Angeles and even Sacramento capital. But throughout the years, um, the church is six, 7,000 people, something like that. They don't have multi-site campuses. They do do streaming and things, but it's international. Of course, he's got grace to you, the ministry. Um, he was the president. Now he's chancellor or something like that of the college and seminary. They're two different locations. The seminary is at the church property. The college is up further. It used to be L.A. Bible College or Baptist College. L.A. Baptist College, I think it was. They changed the name in the 80s because uh, they had asked him to be the president in the 80s. And this is the same about the same time it, they started the seminary. And again, I want you to just remember that 1970s, 1980s, not just within the Southern, within the Southern Baptist Convention, but just in general. Yes, Reagan was president. We got you know conservative politics and this and that. But the church was in a real, real dire state, similar to what it is today, right? There's all sorts of just crazy false teaching out there. Now it's exponentially worse, tenfold, ten times as worse. 10x, like that 
guy who's been divorced a bunch. You know that book, the 10x book, where you're like 10x your life, like 10, do it 10 times as much. It's like, <laughs> it's 10x heresy, right? 10x false teaching. It's 10x. I mean, we're, we're terrible 40 years later, uh, 35 years later. But nonetheless, there was a conservative resurgence in the SBC, not just the SBC, but just in general, uh, politically as well, and many other things. And, you know, the 80s, I'm a child of the 80s, and it is what it is. It was much more tame and a lot better than it is today in, in many respects. Of course, it's not a golden age. We can't look back and say, oh, I wish it was 1985 again. Because if I did, I'd be two. You know, being two was nice, but I don't really remember it. MacArthur being president of the college, being president of the seminary, and, and not just him and kind of this God, but raising up men. There's over a thousand graduates pastoring now from master's. Uh, seminary, and many, many more from Master's College <clears throat> all over the world. And now it's called Master's University, actually. They got a university. They changed their name two or three, four years ago, something like that. Anyway, we're looking at this, and we're going to be talking about these things. So without further ado, a little background, a little background. I uh, hope that's helpful. Let's look at what MacArthur and this center for preaching. Brilliant. All right. So, you like that? You like that view? Let's do this. That way I can see my beautiful face so much more. I'm just kidding. Let's do this one. <laughs> the action or process of inheriting a title, office, or property. People love to talk about it. Grant Hill, Vince Carter, Kobe Bryant, and Harold Miner. What do all of these players have in common? Harold Miner? I barely remember. I used to pay pay attention to NBA. I haven't for a long time. Excuse me. Tracy McGrady, several other guys too. Talking about Michael Jordan. This isn't about Michael Jordan, but if you're if you're in your 30s or older, you're gonna remember a time when uh, there was all this talk about who's gonna take over for Michael Jordan. He retired what 25 years ago. 25 years ago, Michael Jordan. It's crazy. This isn't about sports, but I think there isn't. I mean, Kobe was close. LeBron is way too arrogant and you got to be arrogant but LeBron's just a he's a piece of work we'll just say at some point in time usually earlier on in their careers all of these players were compared to Mike the Mike he's referring to is of course Michael Jordan who most say is the greatest basketball player of all time yes when he retired from the game in 1998 the sports world became obsessed with succession anointing the next Michael Jordan Every four years, Americans vote for president. And every day in between those elections, there's talk of presidential success. And there is already, right? We're two years out. Trump's already announced his presidency. It happens. We always want to talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. So that's the point. He's Austin Duncan here is couching this. Succession is not just the pastorate. Now, he talks later in the episode, which we won't listen to, <clears throat> about John Piper, who's not a pastor anymore, hasn't been a pastor for several years, and he stepped down. Personally, personally, I think MacArthur probably should have stepped down sooner, personally. Uh, he has been ill. I don't have an update on that. Uh, I would say be praying for him, uh, or at least he was not feeling great. I think this last Sunday, in fact, uh, he preached the first sermon, or maybe it was two weeks ago, uh, but he didn't preach the second hour. And so, I don't know. I mean, he's 83, I believe. Um, and, you know... I love it. I mean, praise God for MacArthur. Again, I'm very thankful for him. You don't have to agree with everything. I don't have to agree with everything. But he says, this is what the Bible says. No gimmicks. No flashy. I'm going to take the Bible seriously. I'm wearing a suit and tie. We're doing these things in honor of the Lord and his word. And he has no... And for a long time, you can go back, all the way back to 1969. I'd encourage you to do this, at least, you know, if you want to listen to something. He's preached through all books of the New Testament. Lots in the Old Testament, lots of stuff on Genesis, Exodus, uh, the Psalms, Proverbs, and I mean it's massive. It's just it it's it's he's a Titanic figure, no doubt. So even if you don't completely agree, you don't have to completely agree. You have to appreciate though, you know, oh he's not a Baptist, he's not a Presbyterian, he's not he's not an, he's a you know anti denominational guy. I don't like blah blah blah. You know, whatever. That's okay. Appreciate his fidelity to scripture, his fidelity to his wife, 
It is family, uh, training men. Um, of course, there's Julie Roy's. She's a, a lovely reporter who hates his guts. And anyway, this isn't about her, but. Who will be the next leader of the free world? The 2024 election is just under 900 days away. Get excited. Or take the royal family of England. <laughs> they aren't interested right, because of their Let's ignorance. zip up to. What makes the world obsessed with <clears throat> shoot with the future? This episode, the final of season two, is titled MacArthur and His Successor. When it comes to MacArthur's successor, these are big shoes to fill. John is... Yes. And they are. And so, that's one thing to just remember. No one, no one, no one, no one, no one is going to just step right in and be like a 40-year-old, 40-year younger MacArthur. Some guy in his 50s who's leading the college, the seminary, grace to you, preaching two, three times a week, going and partnering with guys like Al Mohler and Piper and Mark Dever and all these guys. It's my napkin. It's my, I don't know. Um, nobody's going to slip into that and just say, hey, this is what it is. And we'll see more about that in a moment. MacArthur, of course, gets interviewed too. It's something that, something to remember, right? Whenever Charles Stanley, David Jeremiah, Robert Jeffers, all these other big TV guys, was it not Franklin Graham, the other Graham, Jack Graham, a lot of these guys, you might watch these on TV. Maybe you think that's terrible and you never do that. Why would you do that? Well, a lot of people do. A lot of people pay attention. Sorry. A lot of people pay attention and sometimes they'll do it instead of going to church, which I would disagree with. But, you know, it's easy because there's thousands of people. It's a good production. Joel Osteen, notice that I didn't say him. Uh, he's not a pastor. He's just a motivational speaker. Like it or not, your pastor, your favorite guy is going to step away. I mean, the guy who took over for Martin Lloyd-Jones, the guy who took over for Spurgeon, the guy who took over for you name it, right? I mean, there's so many guys you look at church history and, you know, sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't. A lot of times, if there's a pastor there for more than 10 years, it, it just, it takes a lot and usually there's a substitute, and that kind of goes with what I'm going to predict my opinions here in a moment, uh, probably more than a moment, but several minutes. Certainly a larger-than-life leader with an unprecedented ministry that starts in the Grace Church pulpit <clears> and <throat> goes around the world. But it's important to keep in mind, the ministry John leads today is very different than it was in 1969. Well, I grew into it, and that's the only way you could ever imagine handling it. I couldn't. Even at this point in my life, with the experience that I have had in ministry, there is no possible way that I could step into this kind of ministry. Right. Exactly. And, you know, that's no fault of anybody. I'm not saying, oh, yeah, you're terrible, MacArthur. You're not a good person, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. The point is that you, you I mean, you look back, you know, go to college, right, or, or grad school, or, you know, those of you who are have older children or, or your maybe grandchildren now, and you look back and you think, man, how did you do it? People do tell, them, tell me that all the time. How do you do it? <laughs> Whatever. And it's like, I don't know. I mean, you have the same thing. You just mark out your time. You see what you've got to do. You see what the Lord has in front of you. You don't know the future. You don't know if this thing is going to work, these plans, this idea, this move, this job, you know, marrying this girl, having X number of children, buying a house, building a house, whatever, right? sacrificing, changing, going from, you know, an engineering or, or design or, you know, whatever degree, being a teacher and going to seminary and saying, I'm going to be a pastor, I'm going to serve a local church, or I'm going to go teach at a Bible college or something. You don't know how that's going to work out, right? But you grow into it, like you said. And, and that's something that, you know, I would encourage everybody listening. If you're doing that, if you're looking at pastoral ministry or even just being in a company, starting your own business, give it time. You have to give it time. And I'm telling this to me, I'm very, very impatient. I have to confess, I'm very impatient. Uh, oh, yeah, we're all impatient. Yeah, well, I can only speak for me, ultimately. You know, I want stuff yesterday. And I hope, I pray that it, that doesn't come out, you know, pastoring or, or leading my family. Sometimes it does, to be totally honest. But in my mind, it's like I'm always behind. I've always got stuff to do. Ah, oh, I didn't do that. I should have done this. I'm this age. I should have done And a lot of that's just comparison, right? You know, Spurgeon, blah, 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 or MacArthur this, or so-and-so that, or Moeller this. I have deep respect for Al Moeller too, president at Southern Seminary where I went. You know, but you can't compare. I'm sure certainly there's probably people that have compared even one time to me. Oh, Richard's got this. I can't believe, you know, I know, I know people, I know people have uh, family and just other friends and colleagues and things. It's not saying I'm great. 
or terrible. It's just, we don't need to compare. So the Lord gives us what we can handle and what we have, what we need, etc., And what we don't need so often. And carry it out. And I'll tell you why in one simple sentence, because it is based on deep, long lasting relationships of trust. Yeah. I can step into any of these ministry environments and I can say, here's what I think you should do. And they respond with a half a century of trust. Somebody else doing that wouldn't be able to get the trust. John understands that his successor. Right, exactly. And so that's something to remember that taking over, I mean, you might be, say you're a pastor, you're a young guy, just graduated seminary, 30, 35, whatever. And you, you take over. I would, I, I have always been a little weary of these, these positions when I was looking for a role you know, our pastor of 25 years just retired. I'm like, yeah, that, I'm not, I'm not going there. I don't want to get fired my first time because likely, likely you're going to get fired <laughs> because you're going to say, Hey, that's not Bill Smith. You know, Richard's not Bill Smith. And it's like, well, we know he's not Bill Smith. You know, pastor Bill was, you know, 80 years old and he just retired. He was here for 25 years. We all love pastor Bill, but we got pastor Richard now and you're going to get a split. I mean, it happens all the time, all the time. I'm not saying that's going to happen with grace. Probably not. Hopefully not. But I don't know. It happens because we're creatures of habit, right? We we want a certain thing. And even if we're completely aware and say, oh, I don't know, that, that won't happen to me. Maybe. I don't know. Not, you know, bringing down curses on grace or great community church or anything, but we'll see. And I have an, I, I again, I have my beliefs or assumptions what they're going to do. Needs to be a churchman. Someone who will shepherd the flock of God at Grace Church. Someone who's willing to take the time to build the kind of trust that he just spoke about. And for that, there are lots of quality options. From the Master's Seminary alone, more than a thousand alumni are faithfully serving as pastors all around the globe. Expositing the Bible verse by verse, line by line, phrase by phrase, and watching it change lives and strengthen churches. In recent years, I've had the privilege of getting to know many of these men. And I want to introduce a few of them to you. Let's start this episode with a segment I'm calling Interviewing the Successors. All right, before we get into those names, I want you to like and uh, comment, if you don't mind. Like and comment, and subscribe. Um, knocking on the door of a thousand subs. Just do that, it's free, if you don't mind. Uh, it, it does help me out, like I said, it's free. And you'll make, you'll make me all happy inside, so I appreciate that. Um, are they going to do that? Are they going to do this, by the way? Are they going to interview? They're certainly not going to put on, you know, churchjobs.com or whatever. No way. Absolutely not. They're not going to do that. Most churches, most big churches are not going to do that. They're just not. Uh, is this, I don't want to say this is a smoke screen. I don't think it is. I think it's, it's good podcast, not good TV, but good podcasting. Uh, love Austin Duncan, love MacArthur. Like I've already said, not trying to make this a puff piece because I do have some concerns, but overall, 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 it's, it's, it's good. But are they going to ask even a graduate from far away? Let's listen to the names and I'll give you my answer. Listen to these and we'll look, all right. We're going to look at each guy that he names like six guys. And, uh, I think it is, let's see, two, four, six. Yeah. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Scott Artavanis. For me, it goes all the way back to September of 1972. Uh, our family ended up coming to Grace Church here in here. Canoga Park, California, in the San Fernando Valley. And we started to attend there in 72. He's the pastor of Grace Church of the Valley in Kingsburg, California, a quaint Swedish village three hours north of Los Angeles. He was also part of the second graduating class of the Master Seminary way back in 1988. And he currently serves on the school's board of directors. So much of Scott's expositional ministry has been shaped by Pastor John. I grew up with his family. I grew up with his kids. I grew up specifically with Matt playing baseball at high school together. We traveled to games together. He really was a spiritual father and mentor. But he taught me how to do a wedding. He taught me how to do a funeral. Not because he said, Scott, this is what I'm going to do. But I watched his tenderness with the families, both before, during the funeral, the memorial service, as well as afterward. And I just, I think it was his life that impacted me. I, I think one of the other. Pause there for a moment. So Scott Artavanis, I know the most about him. Um, he was pastor of Placerita Baptist Church, I believe it's called. 
in Santa Clarita, which is just, it was literally over the hill. California, Southern California has a lot of like mountains and hills and stuff. There's like four mountain ranges, kind of main ones. And then there's a bunch of hills and valleys. Very beautiful. Uh, it's just about 30 minutes outside, 30, 45 minutes, depending on traffic, maybe an hour. <laughs> That's how we gauge things in California, not miles, but minutes. And I, we lived there for a couple of years before we moved to Kentucky. We actually, I don't think we ever went there. No, we didn't. Uh, but it was right next to the college. No. Yeah, it was right next to the college. Excuse me. It's right next to the college. Just, just the stones throw away from the master's college, now university. Remember the seminaries, 30 minutes south at Grace Community Church in Sun Valley, just, just Los Angeles proper. So Scott Ardavanis was there for a number of years. I don't know why he left. Um, can't really remember. I don't know. Um, but there's reasons, right? I'm not going to speculate because I don't know. And I wasn't there. And I wasn't even part of the church. So he does have seven kids. His son uh, does a podcast. Can't remember his first name though. But I've looked at a couple of those things. He's got he's got a great, really polished, good looking podcast uh, as well. Does interviews and things. He's interviewed MacArthur, of course. And anyway, so Artavanis, his son, who's probably about my age, maybe a little younger. But I think that Scott, out of these six names, spoiler alert, is easily the best candidate for taking MacArthur's um, role. Right, slipping in and just he's about twenty years, probably twenty five years younger than MacArthur, and you know, he could easily do that. Um, not only is he second graduating class, right? So he's been around for a long time. He was on the staff there. He's well-trained. He went to LA, there it is, Los Angeles Baptist College, now Masters University, uh, MDiv. And then he went to TEDS. I love that Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. <laughs> Such a funny nickname. But he spent 17 years, a senior pastor in Chicago and California, adjunct at Masters Seminary. Uh, and now he's there, but he's, he's been in the ecosystem for a long time. As Scott Artavanis mentions, well, well, we'll just let him talk about that. There are takeaways. There's much to say is I've known him for 50 years and I've never known him as a polemic man. Um, uh, I've never heard him harsh. I've never really encountered him as hard hitting. No, my impression was he's my pastor mm -hmm. and he's faithful. And I found him over 50 years extremely humble and personal. And so I'm impacted by that. His graciousness, his kindness. Scott is a great candidate because he understands MacArthur's pastoral heart. You can see the imprint of pastoral ministry from John MacArthur to Scott Arvanis. For our next pastoral successor, let's eavesdrop on a Sunday morning service at Cornerstone Community Church in. All right, so. Is it going to be Scott Artavanis? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, it could be. He's in California now. Like I said, he was in the backyard, uh, really close, right next to the seminary, college, college, uh, and was on staff there. I believe he was on staff way back when. He certainly went there for a number of years. Like you said, he's known MacArthur for 50 years. Um, maybe he's older than 60. Maybe he's late 60s. I don't, I don't think he's much older than that, but you know, you, you're going to want somebody who's at least got, I would say, 10 to 15 years left, quote unquote, in him. Uh, 20, 25, 30. I mean, get, you're not going to find somebody who's going to be there. The next guy who takes over will not be there for 53 years. I, I'm, I'll go out on a limb and say that. 25 years? Yeah, possibly. Uh, there will be people who will leave. I just, I guarantee that. Again, I'm not trying to, I'm not taking any joy in that. But people like MacArthur, they, they like it. Right, and they they listen on the radio, and they've moved to the area because of that. I know that for a fact. Uh, and a lot of people they'll they'll visit because MacArthur used to preach Sunday morning and then Sunday night. He doesn't do preach Sunday nights anymore. He passed that off a while back. Um, but he would do basically that's how he preached so much, and usually preach anywhere from forty five minutes to an hour. Right, forty five minutes was a short sermon for MacArthur, and that goes all the way back. So he's he's preached hundreds, hundreds of hours. <laughs> Just from that pulpit, not to mention, you know, all the conferences and the this and the chapel ser services and everything else. And so he is, he is without a doubt, one of the foremost preacher, preachers of the 20 and 21st century, like hands down. So, so good. I mean, I, I, who, who would you put up besides MacArthur as just a Titanic figure? I, I don't, I don't know anybody really. Yeah. Some of these guys, Charles Stanley, um, What's the other guy? Charles. 
another Charles, Chuck Swindoll, right? You know, some of these guys, TV preacher, Robert Jeffers, sometimes they can be a little more polemical, a little more political, et cetera, et cetera. But Goa, India. But when you see Christ who has crushed the heel of death, you become a lion for him. If he gives you that courage, as you look at his life, as you look at his resurrection, and you know that that is mine. For me, dying is game, not just because of what we lose, but because of what we gain. Sammy Williams, a graduate of the Master's Seminary, trains men for ministry in India. He oversees a seminary that is preparing the next generation of pastors in one of the world's most populated countries. With a candidate like Sammy, you see someone who understands the power of the gospel to reach across language and border. So that's good. Um, they got a real broad breadth, right? And clearly they're not looking for the next white, cisgendered, old guy, white male, blah, blah, whatever, right? They're not doing that. And that's good. Obviously, they're not doing that because they're Christians. They're not, um, <laughs> they want to honor the Lord and find the best man to be pastor, not just a preacher, right? And that's the something you you can't, because in one sense, you know, MacArthur kind of breaks a lot of molds. He's not the best preacher, quote unquote, as far as like three point outline or a poem and a this and all these analogies and all these illustrations and all this other stuff. He's just Bible. And you'll listen and you're like, oh, wow, well, that was 45 minutes. I can't believe how long that was. That didn't even feel like that long at all. <laughs> like, it's it's amazing. Um, it's, you know, and a lot of it's because he just knows the Bible well. And he's able to apply it well. And he wants the Holy Spirit to use the scripture to change lives. Will it be Sammy Williams? I doubt it. Highly, highly, highly doubt it. Um, I don't think it's going to be anybody, honestly, who's who's not deeply in the ecosphere now. Who's either on staff, and I have a name that I'll share later, who I think it'll be. That's who I think it'll be, or I think I would say. Or used to be there for a long, long time. There's two names, technically. One guy who's there, one guy who used to be there. We'll look at. And... I don't think, you know, I don't think it's going to be, this guy sounds like he's doing great work. It's not because he's Indian, not because he's foreign, not because he's far away. He's doing great work in India. That's absolutely needed. I mean, there's over a billion people. It's like 1.3 billion or something insane people in India. We need biblical uh, men and women, pastors, churches there. So I highly, highly, highly doubt it will be this guy. Next. He has MacArthur's heartbeat for the nations and understands the priority of the Great Commission, which makes him an excellent candidate. It's true. Very true. Our next interview is with Will Thomas, a Master's Seminary alumnus who shepherds a small church in New Bern, North Carolina. My church is the sweetest little church in the world. We are about, mm, with all our kids, maybe round up 200 members. I would say the most fundamental aspect of what I saw in Pastor MacArthur and the pastors of the church that I got to be around is that they were entrusted with the truth of God's word and to give it to God's people and to do that in a, in a clear, faithful manner to where it's, it's meaning. And it um, I'll just close these out here. So all these links are going to be in the description. Um, they're actually links to their sermons. Uh, these guys' sermons, well, I went a little deeper and looked at their staff pages. So he's been here for a while, uh, graduated in... Uh, he's been pastor since 2006. So he's been there a while. You know, he's probably mid forties, late forties. Um, so he could easily come in and be the next MacArthur. Now there's another episode they did on the podcast the next MacArthur. I think that was, that wasn't talking about succession there at Grace Community Church. That was talking about, you know, the next guy who's going to pick up the mantle and be at a church 40, 50 years, have a massive ministry, international center. That was more of that. And it kind of, kind of tricked me. I think it probably tricked a lot of people. Not to say they were trying to be tricky, but um, will it be Will Thomas? Could be. Could be. Uh, probably not, though. Again, he's doing good work here in North Carolina, or there in North Carolina. Um, and, you know, he's not in the ecosphere. Most of the people don't know who he is there at Grace Community Church. They just don't. And, you know, he's pastor around 100 people. That would be hard. I would imagine, I think it'd be hard if it were me. I mean, the past church I pastor is anywhere from 35 to 45 on a given week. So not even 100. Uh, 100 to 5,000, that would be that would be very, very, very difficult, I think, um, for lots and lots of reasons. Not to say you can do it, but that's just, that's my, that's my thought. 
because I just, I don't know, I think that's, yeah. All right, so next one, back here. It's functional authority guided and governed the congregation. In Will Thomas and his charming Southern twang, you see a man carrying on the simple priority of pastoral ministry. Will understands that his job is to be faithful and follow the Bible. Will makes a great candidate because he holds scripture both high in principles and practice. Now, let's hear another expositor who learned from John MacArthur how to proclaim God's truth. Being an ambassador to a queen is nothing, is nothing compared to being called to be the herald of the king of kings. Fali Rohangni is training church leaders in Madagascar. No, not the New York Zoo, Madagascar, the island nation off the coast of Africa, Madagascar. And Fali is a gifted expositor. So again... Similar to Sammy, uh, this guy's international, great, praise God, doing great work, highly, highly doubt he's going to come and be pastor there at Grace Community Church there in Los Angeles. It just, because you, you, you don't, obviously he's got conviction, right? He's already, pre you can just tell there's just conviction, good preaching, uh, good direction, fidelity to scripture, all those things, no doubt, I'm not questioning any of these men's salvation, none of that. All of these guys, I think, would be a great candidate, and I'm not, you know, casting shade on Austin Duncan for bringing any of these guys up, but as a church, as a congregation, I mean, some of these people at Grace Community Church have literally been there their entire lives. They've never had another guy as pastor, ever, right? And there's going to be a level of pride in, hey, John MacArthur's my pastor, right? There just is. Even though it's five, 6,000 people, whatever the number is. And there's been lots of people that have moved in and out over the years, planted churches, etc., changed churches, moved, whatever. You're going to need to have somebody that the church is familiar with, is what I'm getting at. Could be this guy. Again, don't think so. They're taking all he's learned from John MacArthur and applying it in his home country. Like MacArthur, he can preach the lights out. And he understands the priority of training men. The Bible says the glory of a young man is his strength. So maybe we need to be looking at the youth. After all, MacArthur was only 29 when he took the job at Grace Church. Not long ago, I traveled to Sacramento, the capital of California, and I interviewed two potential successors, young, dynamic pastors who are leading growing congregations in the thick of a secular city. My name is Tranway Yu, and I grew up here in Sacramento, California. Uh, I grew up just down the street from this church and actually went to school, right around the corner over here at the school right behind the church. I grew up going to this church and got saved in this church went away to college at UCLA, and that's how we got plugged into Grace Community Church and Grace on Campus, and uh, got to sit under John MacArthur's ministry there. I feel like I've learned from Pastor John's example just to be faithful and to trust the Word. So I think Tranway Yu here, pastor, young guy, um, went to UCLA, was in, it says he's also in um, Florida for six years as an associate pastor, smart guy, uh, I believe this is a, a Chinese congregation, this is uh, Cantonese, or excuse me, Mandarin, Mandarin. That's one of the languages in, spoken in China. Uh, he's the English pastor. He's likely bilingual and very, very talented. Of course, he's got a degree from, from UCLA in math, right? So, you know, he's smart. I think he would probably be the best. He would be the best guy besides like Artavanus. I think he would be the best guy uh, or maybe the next guy they talk to. Just because he's dynamic, he's young. Uh, the, the church seems to be, from what I can tell, I don't know the church. Like I said, I know Scott Artavanis the most as far as hearing his preaching and other things. And this is, again, this is my opinion, right? This is just my opinion. Take it for what it is. I'm not some secret, you know, spy or anything like that. Uh, none of this, I could be wrong on all these things. This is just my gut feeling. Um, and just, you know, interesting to talk about. Why not? Because it's, it's fun and exciting and um, different and scary and everything else. So I think Tranway here would be a great, a great candidate. Um, because he's not only a pastor, he's been to Florida. He's, uh, obviously bilingual. There's a large populace of people, uh, Chinese people and others in, um, Southern California. And so, yeah, I think this would be really good if they're going to, if they're going to pull somebody who's kind of in the ecosphere but not at Grace Community Church. I don't think they will. Again, I don't think they will, but it's possible. Be faithful and preach and teach and shepherd and, and just trust the word. Trust the word to do the work. The issue is not culture. The issue is obedience. 
Are we more loving than God? Are we more wise than God? The church is God's idea, not ours. We would be foolish to set aside his instructions. Abijah. Across town from Tranway, nice. another young man named Vlad Berlaka is leading City Bible Church, a thriving, growing congregation in the heart of Sacramento. Seeing Pastor John invest into uh, other leaders in the church and equip saints to do the work of the ministry is something that thoroughly carried over to what we're doing at City Bible even today. Another lesson I learned from Pastor John's ministry, which is no gimmicks, commitment to faithful exposition of God's work. You go out. No gimmicks, faithful exposition of God's work. We'll back up a little bit so he, we can hear his his preaching too. Uh, right, and that's the thing that MacArthur is is good at. Right, no gimmicks. <laughs> and that's, you know, praise God, that's what it is. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, sometimes we need the simplicity. I think sometimes it can get too simple. That would be one of my critiques where there's just kind of everything stripped down and sanitized. I do appreciate art. God still appreciates art. He appreciates creativity. I mean, just look at the blue blue sky and the green grass and the white Cascade Mountains, etc. I mean, it's, you know, there's something for beauty. Uh, not to say they live there in a, you know, white, beige, <laughs> square room with bad acoustics. Not at all. But that would be, you know, a mild criticism. I would say that the focus, there's very, very, very little focus on aesthetic uh, in one sense. Probably came out wrong. But point is, it is stripped down. And again, if I'm going to, if I'm going to take a stripped down version and the Bible preached faithfully. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Trust Christ. We can see this. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Come to Christ. Get baptized. And there's not all this extra vestigial stuff that has, you know, centuries of baggage. I'm going to take it. Which is... No gimmicks, commitment to faithful exposition of God's word. You go out of your way, sacrificing even your own self in order to be there to strengthen and to challenge and encourage your brother or sister's faith when it becomes shaky in the midst of suffering. Perhaps John MacArthur's successor has an interesting name like Tranway U or Vlad Berlaka. Or maybe it's Scott, Sammy, Will, or Fali. Or another one of the countless men around the world who are ready to take the baton from MacArthur. But is the kind of interview process you just heard how Grace Community Church is going to pick her next pastor? It no. <laughs> no. Uh, not at all. So, go listen to that. Number eight, episode number eight. I'll put it in the description below. So, what do I think is going to happen? Well, personally, I think uh, MacArthur, will, you know, he'll either retire uh, or, he'll, or he'll die. He'll pass away. Like, obviously, one of the two things will happen, and I'm sure there's, they already have a game plan, right, and they've had a game plan probably for years, they've, they're very, very equipped there at Grace, um, Phil Johnson's kind of one of the, the right-hand men there, um, although he's not young by any means, as far as I know, he's got older grandchildren, so he's, Phil kind of seems to be ageless, though, he could be like 55, or he could be 75, it's hard to tell, <laughs> he's got full head of hair, and it's, it's not very gray and everything else, so, I don't know. He's probably like 65, something like that. Uh, but point is, they've got a lot of guys there. Uh, another guy who does stuff um, is Tom. I forget his name. Tom. Let's see here. Not Tom Scott. That's a friend of mine. Tom Patton. There he is. Tom Patton. So Tom Patton does, here's the Grace Community Church website. So getting into my, I mean, this is, these are all the elders. I mean, right? Massive. Oh, Brian Biedebach. He used to be a missionary in Africa. I can't remember which country. Nathan Busnitz. His dad was there, been there for a long time. Uh, Abner Chow. I think he's the president of Masters University. So many of these guys could, all these guys could take over. Carl Hargrove, great preacher. Uh, and all these little names underneath here, these are all like the Sunday schools that are bigger than most churches. So there are all these like mini churches within. So you might think, oh, that's bad. I don't like that. I don't like that polity. 5,000, 6,000 people. How can anybody pastor? How can anybody know about anything? Well, there's Sunday schools that meet first hour, second hour is preaching or there's overlap, right? Because I don't think they seat 6,000 people in the auditorium, the uh, worship center sanctuary. But these are all, you know, 
50, 100, 200 people, 300 people, whatever they are, size-wise. And so there's dozens and dozens, not dozens, but a few dozen, there's Phil Johnson there, uh, of these different ones, right? So here's Tom Patton. He does a lot of the announcements these days. Um, Mike Riccardi, he, he, so my guess would be one of these guys, either Mike Riccardi, could be Tom Patton, maybe Phil Johnson, possibly Carl Hargrove, Austin Duncan, Nathan Boozness, oh yeah, Irv, there's his dad, Nathan Boozness, uh, probably those, those four, whatever, four or five guys would be the most, make the most sense. What I think is going to happen is likely, you know, either death or retirement for MacArthur. And they'll then have, um, they'll then have probably months of, this guy will preach, you know, a month. And then the next guy will preach and I'll probably have a schedule. That would be my guess. Because it will be very, just massive cataclysmic change. Right, like the Titanic, sink it. <laughs> right, like take it for what it is. That's my own thoughts, my own opinion. You know, all all opinions are mine. People put that online, like these tweets are my personal. It's like, what's well, your name? Of course, they're like, what is somebody like thinking your thoughts for you? Like, of course, they're your thoughts. Dumb, whatever. Probably doesn't need to be said. I think that's what will happen. Likely, they'll have you know a six month or a year kind of overlap recoup, getting people used to the fact. Now, again, MacArthur has, I mean, he's taken summers off for several years. Um, and so guys, they're all used to, the congregation's used to um, Tom Patton. He's, they're used to um, um, Austin Duncan and Phil Johnson and Carl Hargrove and Rich, Rick McLean and Street and Shannon and Riccardi and all these guys preaching. All these guys have preached from the grace pulpit. I, I would imagine every single one of these men has at some point. Some are better than others as far as expo expositors. And being in the pulpit, you want to be dynamic. You can't be a good expositor, but not dynamic. And not just that, but you have to be a good pastor, right? And that's the thing. They're looking for pastor, right? He's a pastor teacher. It's not preacher, right? John MacArthur is the pastor teacher of Grace Community Church. Things will change. People will leave. Like it or not, that's what's going to happen. To ease that, I think they'll do an overlap where a couple years, a couple years, probably a couple months, probably a year, and then they'll appoint one of those men. Congregational vote, I think, or it might be elder rule. Um, I think it's an elder rule church where they decide there's not a congregational vote on that, although they vote on elders, so they're kind of voting. That's what elder rules generally are especially when they're like a Bible church, community church, that sort of thing. And so that's what I think. I think the best man for the job, frankly, is Austin Duncan, who's the guy who's doing this now. He's doing the podcast now. He's easily the most dynamic. He's the best preacher that I've heard next to MacArthur there at Grace Church. Um, he is the pastor elder over Crossroads, which is the college he was in junior high, and then he was in high school, and now he's at college. And he's been there for over a decade. Um, he's changed his look. He used to be kind of, he used to have shaved head and like a goatee, uh, and kind of look more hip and cool. And now he's grown out his hair, he's got different sunglasses, full beard, or different glasses, full beard. And he looks more conservative, more reserved. Love him to death. He's very funny. Great guy. He's, he's, he's just a well-balanced Preacher, well balanced man, loves his wife, loves his kids. Um, he's from, he's been in the ecosphere for probably 20 years, maybe more. Uh, he's originally from New Mexico, moved from New Mexico to Southern California to go to seminary. And, uh, and his preaching is outstanding. Uh, and so he would be a recommendation for me to listen to. Uh, he's, he's got a lot of gifts that MacArthur doesn't have. Of course, MacArthur has gifts that he doesn't have, but he's also, young enough that he could easily be in that pulpit 25, 30 years, maybe more. And so I think he's easily the best candidate. I'm going to put it out there and say, Austin Duncan will be the next pastor of Grace Community Church. Here about 50 minutes into this show. That's what I'm getting at. However, the man he took over for was Rick Holland, who's a good, probably 10, 15 years older than Austin. 
uh, probably 20, maybe 20 years older. He was over Crossroads, the college ministry, which is like 250 college kids. Like talk about, and that's college, not like youth talking college. So UCLA, USC, pulling from all these different places. I went to Cal State Northridge, which is just a stone throw away from, from Grace as well. So they have places in, in all these colleges, all these universities in Southern California. They're, they're all over the place. And so Rick Holland was the pastor there. 25 years, right? Grace Community Church, huge amount of time. You can't see that, my bad. Uh, 25 years at Grace Community Church. Well, at Grace, he pastored Crossroads College. There it is. He's got loads of degrees, very smart. He's a very humble guy. Um, he left, I think, in 2011. So it's been a good, a good 12 years. 11, 12 years, something like that. He pastors um, Mission Row Bible Church in Kansas. He's probably the, 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 the most versed. People who have been at Grace for a long time would know who he is. Uh, he is easily the best guy to come in and pastor the rest of his life for the next however many years. So Austin Duncan, he's the best guy there. The best guy there on staff, there right now. Everybody knows him. If you don't know him, you're not paying attention, right? Rick Holland, the guy who Duncan took over for 12, 13 years ago, who left uh, because it was one of those like, I mean, he was he was the next in line. I mean, I've I've heard Rick Holland say that, um, you know, without saying it, if you know what I mean. And you know, it was very hard, and he shared his testimony. I, I don't, I think maybe it was an interview. I don't, I won't have the link because I don't know where it is. But both these men are outstanding. They're both family men. They both love the Lord. They both love His Word. And either of these guys would be really, really good. Uh, so I think Austin Duncan would easily be the best candidate to come in for um I mean yeah so 2005 so he's been there 18 years 18 years right got three kids four kids three daughters and a son hey just like us um easily the best to to be there take over but I think there'll be a transition period. It's not going to be MacArthur retires the next week is Austin Duncan or or whoever his successor is. I think it'll be an overlap of the pastors, elders there preaching and taking a series and, and going through and kind of letting people heal, letting people sift out, letting change. Because, I mean, even in my church, the church I own, I'm just kidding, uh, the church I pastor, there have been people and there was, you know, a couple people that were there when I came and they're not there anymore. But there's been a number of people many more who haven't, um, who more than who have left, who have come. It's just personality. It's just, it's what happens. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's a good thing. I'm not going to say it's a bad thing, really, because frankly, I don't know. I don't know how you can really even gauge that. Point is, Austin Duncan easily, I'll put me back down, I don't know what I did. Austin Duncan there, person, guy rather, man best fitted, who's on staff now, who meets all those qualifications, um, who's the most dynamic, the most friendly, all these things, right? The most, the most, my point is most pastoral. A guy who could come in would be Rick Holland. That's my thought. Uh, he's also, you know, ex extremely well-versed. He's got a degree from master's, Southern, and then Midwestern. Uh, PhD, he's getting, it says he's getting that, or he has that. I guess he has that. Um, got a bunch of kids, one grandson. Yeah, so he's a little bit older than uh, Austin, but he could easily preach the next 25 years too. Right. And so they're going to be familiar with him. Uh, the people there at Grace Church. Is he going to lead Grace Community or Grace to You? Right. That ministry, he's going to lead this and this and this. Not necessarily. Uh, it would be it would be wrong and terrible for a man to take on all the stuff MacArthur's been doing, because a lot of the stuff is just his own person. Right. His own personality, the time, you know, it's 1990 or it's 19, it's 2000 or it's 2020 and it's COVID stuff and whatever. MacArthur was the man for that hour, for that time, just like you are, even if you're changing diapers. Right. And you're listening to this or, you know, you're pastoring a church of 15 people or a thousand people. Right. You're there. Oh, I really like to be here. I really wish it was. And I'm telling this to myself, too. I really am, because it's hard. It's so, so hard to think. If you're like me, ah, oh, man, I wish I was, I wish I was over there. I wish I was, there's real, I feel like I'm missing out. Maybe you don't feel like that. I do. 
oh, I feel like I, I'm not in the right place. You know, whether that's here, whether that was in Louisville for a seminary, um, we lived there, it was on campus, or I went on campus, we didn't live on campus. And, or, or in Los Angeles, uh, just outside of LA where I was working, I was just doing graphic design and feeling like, well, you know, I want to do something more. And I'm thankful that we're out of that bubble. I'm very thankful uh, there is a bubble. That's another critique. There is a massive bubble, a uh, master's grace to you bubble, grace, grace community church bubble. Uh, it does come with a little bit of arrogance. It does come with a little bit of um, pride. It does come with um, a lot of kind of things that you're like, eh, I don't know. You know, you look down on denominations. You look down on people who aren't exactly like you. Not everybody, I'm not castigating everybody, but it does happen. We're human, we're sinners. All right. Anyway, this was a little bit longer than I thought it would be, but we're just shy of an hour. I hope this was helpful. Go check out this this podcast, uh, the MacArthur Ex- Center for Expository Preaching. Um, those are my picks, Austin Duncan or Rick Holland. Both guys would be more than excellent, more than fitted to do the job. The other guys are nice. Maybe Scott Artavanis, maybe, uh, or Tranway U. Uh, if you really want to go young guy and get a dynamic, extra bilingual aspect and, and other things. I assume he's bilingual. Um, but it's, 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 I would say a 99% certainty that he's, the next pastor will be there at Grace Church already. And likely will be Austin Duncan. I really, I really think that it could be one of the other guys, like I mentioned, but I really think it's going to be him uh, if they're picking somebody that's not coming in. So again, I hope you found this helpful. Please like and uh, subscribe if you have not. Like I said, it's free, right? It's free. It helps me out. Um, and it helps the channel grow, tells YouTube when you comment too, tells YouTube, hey, so just drop a comment like, hey, this is great or you're terrible or you're stupid or you're wrong or I like Austin Duncan too or I go to Grace Church or I don't know, whatever. Some comment, this just tells this, you know, computer simulation algorithm thing that people want to do this. It helps the video. It helps the channel. Uh, and ultimately, my goal is to be uh, against the world for the world. That's the whole it's contra mundo pro mundo. So, yes, this was a comment specifically about a church, about Grace Community Church, John MacArthur, his successor. Uh, but I do different shows like this uh, on different subjects, you know, some false teaching or some stupid scandal or whatever. I try not to be uh, accusatory or polemical for just polemical sake, but let's remember that the New Testament deals so much with polemics, right? There is a level of calling out, I mean, Jesus with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, or Paul with Hymenaeus and Alexander or Demas. We have to call out false teaching. We are called to do these certain things. And uh, it's also good to, of course, always bring scripture to bear. I think that's, that's trying my goal. I didn't have any scripture here, um, but all these men meet the qualifications of 1 Timothy and Titus, all the classic elder, pastor, overseer models. Um, so I hope this was helpful, like I said. And that's it. Y'all take care. Have a blessed day. We'll see you.